eBay Motors is here for the ride. Elbow grease and a whole lot of love transformed 100,000 miles and a body full of rust into a drive entirely its own. LED headlights, spoilers, whatever you need. eBay Motors has it at affordable prices. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, it's guaranteed to fit your ride every time. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Thanks for listening to CarCast on Podcast One. Have you heard Spike's Car Radio? It's comedian, actor, writer Spike Ferriston sitting on the porch in Malibu talking with some cool people about cool cars and life in general. My first guest is Jerry Seinfeld. He's right here. He was all right. Don't try to hug him. Chris Hardwick. I could feel everything on the road. I mean, it was right. basically like, it was like unprotected sex for driving. <laughs> Jeremy Piven. I, you know what? I think you years. and Jerry are spiritually tied to cars, <laughs> and I respect it and I love it, but I don't quite get it yet, but I want to get it. Download new episodes of Spike's Car Radio every Wednesday on the Podcast One app, or save time and subscribe now at Apple Podcasts or at PodcastOne.com. Get it on. Got to get it on. No choice but to get on mandate. Get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling a friend. We love that about you, right? Matt? Yeah. I'm Adam Kroll. It's Matt, the moderator, DeAndrea, over there. Uh, good news. Uh, we got a couple guys from JAG coming to join us. Yeah. Because they got a special vehicle, and we're going to get into that. Um, so, it's the uh, most powerful JAG road car ever built, everybody. I like it. Uh, well, so we'll talk about Jag, we'll talk about the car, and we'll talk about the tune, and we'll talk about all that stuff. Uh, so we're getting ready for Monterey. We are excited. Yeah, I love for- Monterey. It's the best trip ever. I agree with me because, <laughs> and I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you why. Monterey is great because there's so many car events that first off have cars that I have no interest in. Like, there's just, you know, it's Bob's Big Boy and it's all Mopar. And it's like, oh, who cares? Right. And then they're... So, liking cars... I never thought about this. Now I'm thinking about it. Liking cars doesn't make you cool. Like, liking music doesn't make you cool. If you like Hall and Oates, you're fucking retarded. <laughs> and if you like anything that Eagles have done separately, or you like Witchy Woman, then there's something wrong with you. You're not a car. Okay. You're not a music person. You're a fucking idiot. So <laughs> if you're all Mopar all the time, you're a fucking idiot. That's yeah. my take. And mostly with Ford and Chevy, too. If you're like all anything all the time, you're a fucking idiot. Because it's like saying, I like music, but you like Maneater. Well, now you're an idiot. Like, I'd rather you just not like... I'd rather hang out with a guy yeah. who said, I don't like music, than a guy who said, I love music, I love Maneater. Gotcha. I think I would rather... Gotcha. Just be quiet. Just keep quiet is what you're saying. If you're Yeah, although <laughs> I'm going to amend this because I, I don't think I would rather hang out with a guy... Actually, I would. I'd rather hang out with a guy who said, I know nothing about cars and I don't like cars versus I'm all Mopar all the time or even all Chevy or Ford well, all the time, but trucks. Go ahead. Right. Like, I don't, I don't like football. Right. But I could do better with you than a guy who liked football, but he only liked the uh, Vegas Diamondbacks, and he was an arena football guy. Yeah, okay, See, I'm with you. This is what this is yeah, to me. I've never the, heard of that. Is that could, a real thing? <laughs> uh, I think it may be the Arizona Diamondbacks, or maybe that's the baseball team. It's arena football. Okay. The point is this. Yeah. The thing that's great about Pebble Beach is it's a car guy thing, but it's the best it's the best cars. And you can sit yeah. around and go, so what? I like uh, first-gen Camaros, and you like Maserati bird cages. All right, so what? You like Maneater, and yeah, yeah. I like Vivaldi. Like, it's just better. It's better. Yeah. You look at a 917, it's, it's better. You see what I'm saying? And there's a bit of there's a bit of everything. There's there's, a, a there's everything, everything yeah. but you can walk right past all the fucking tea buckets and all the bullshit you don't give a fuck about, right. and all those idiots with the tattoos all over the top of their hands that are building <laughs> stupid loud things that don't do anything, <laughs> make a ton of noise, and are yeah. super dangerous. Yeah. And like who? Ugh. 
What a so fucking waste of time. Every, every time we start leading up, the months leading up to Monterey, a lot of people reach out, social media, and say, I want to go to Monterey. I want to go to Monterey. And you absolutely should. And you should put a little bit of planning into it. Like a lot of the hotels, everything is sold out. Go with a couple of buddies. Maybe get an Airbnb or share some of the costs. And uh, there's a bunch of great events. And the, the events are, can get a little pricey as well. But make a plan. You know, make a plan. Now, if you're gonna if you're gonna do like the road trip, you're like I'm gonna drive an hour, two hours, even three hours, spend as much of the day there as possible, and, and then go home. I always recommend the track. Like, if you're gonna go, and you only got yeah. one to do it, one day to do it, go to the track because it's got all the right noises and it's the greatest car show on earth of race cars. Yeah, and and like, look, if you absolutely hate, you know, race cars. Then maybe go to Pebble or go to Concorso, you right. know. But I think the track is an exciting part. If you if you're going like one time and you got one day, go to the track. If you can swing a couple of days, uh, and come by and say hi to us. Yeah, we'd love that. We'll be hanging out with the Canepa this year. We are going to be we're going to be at the Quail on Friday. We'll probably be at the track maybe in the morning. Don't say hi to us then. Not, no, don't don't no, even go to the I'm, quail. I'm, yeah, don't go there. I want to get my cheese and my buzz on. <laughs> we have the quail on Friday. We'll be at the track, the track on Saturday. Uh, I think you're in the car in, in the morning and the afternoon. That's on that's Saturday. The, on Saturday, right? Yeah. So definitely look for that. And if you're going out for Pebble, we'll be there at Pebble. We'll probably be sitting someplace drinking some champagne or some mimosas or something. But we right. like to walk around. If you see us, come. Yeah, come say hi. Yeah, come say hi. We don't mind it, and it's kind of fun, and it's uh, no big, no big whoop at all. All right, so uh, I, I the, the cars. So again, the cars that are the best, everything in race trim is is always better. But the kind of stuff I think, if you want to know where I'm at, the stuff I probably get the biggest kick out of, I would say, just walking by and sort of looking at. I would say the vintage, like, 75 to 80 F1 cars. Those are spectacular those are cool. when, you, when yeah. you go out and see those cars because you get to see how they work and how the engine and the cooling and, like, it's all sort of right there on the sleeve of the car. You yeah. can see it all. I think the same kind of years, although maybe a little bit earlier, I always love going by BMW and seeing the M1 Pro cars and the Batmobiles and the Group 5 Batmobiles yeah, with yeah, the huge yeah. flares and the crazy Kugeldorfen and slide injection <laughs> and all kinds of stuff. Like, those are always super cool. Yeah. Um, going and seeing some of the, like, Roush Capris and that kind of stuff yeah. is, is really cool. Of course, like anything Porsche is cool, 917, 935s, like just RSRs, all that is yeah. is bitching. The, the, the little ones, the B sedans, I like seeing the little four bangers out there. I like seeing some of the alphas and, and, and you know, uh, the, the, the TR6s, the little Triumphs as well. There's a right. handful of cool cars. And, right. and by the way, it, early in the morning, usually before we get out there, there's all the chitty chitty bang bang cars, and those guys are just putting around at 40 miles an hour. But the sensation of speed is crazy. They get their leather helmet on, their goggles, oh running, my on, God. running on like wooden wheels. Wait, last year, one guy <laughs> almost lost his picnic basket. He was moving oh that my fast. Gosh. It was flying. <laughs> flying. Flying. I mean, the thing flew, yeah. the lid flew open. They lost some paper. But plates. I'll tell you, though, those guys are fun to talk to. Like, you go by a few of those cars, and the guy's dressed up, and he's got his knee high boots on. And he's yeah. got like his puppy no, pants. I, and, those cars are and he's great. Polishing brass and stuff. I have. They. I. I will. I will be an an, an even handed uh, offender here when I say between the Mopar. By, by the way, don't get me wrong. I love the race trim Dodge Challenger, and uh, I love. Or is it Charger? I think it's Challenger. Challenger. Uh, I like the race trim Challenger. I like some of the AMX weird stuff, red, yeah. white, and blue stuff out there in the Trans Am, like the 70s Trans Am, or yeah. 1970 Trans Am stuff. So, uh, but, but I don't like any of the Chitty Chitty Bang Bang stuff. Uh, I put it up there with the stupid Rat Rod stuff. <laughs> and uh, also, like I said, all the stupid Mopar stuff, zero interest. Not because I'm a snob, but because the stuff is junk. It's just junk, yeah. like the Mopar. Hey, it's got a stick shift. It's a pistol grip, the fake wood, something. It's just junk. So, and the rat rod stuff, to me, 
I, those guys are the four wheel equivalent to the guys with the hogs that are all dressed out that are just there to make noise and they're not there to do anything else. Like you guys with the tattoos on top of your hands are just here to make noise. <laughs> Look, there's nothing. I, you, yeah. I, you say you like cars, but I think you like welding, but you don't really like cars. Or you don't like driving the car. Or, or you like being seen yeah. or heard or something. I like the artistry yeah. of, well, of a lot of it. Say. I mean, I do, I do appreciate there's a handful of these guys that – that you know, in the chitty chitty bang bang cars and a lot of the you know a lot of the cars out there are especially at the racetrack you walk around and you're like I do like almost some zero of the, Mopar at this place though but like, it's like, but like a more you've never there's never the been a better Mopar I, I like. there's never been a better Mopar ratio at a car thing ever <laughs> there's going to be three thousand cars and yeah. eight Mopars and we can Poor all Mopar. just Fuck them. <laughs> that, that stuff's junk. And the people who like them are idiots. You're fucking dumb. The cars are bad. They're dumb. They're just dumb, shitty cars. And you guys never stop talking about them. Like, they're good. But they're not good. They're junk. So, I've, you've never seen... Have you ever seen less Mopar representation in a, a weekend I, of I, nothing but cars? I gotta be honest with you. I can't remember seeing a Mopar like you're in the Trans Am class there's a handful of the, couple yeah you of, want to know of, you don't see the any? Mustangs and the Camaros we see in, in old here's why I don't see Mopar out there we're going racing yeah we have to turn we're going racing <laughs> okay we have to turn and smart people show up and smart uh, okay. people don't want to stare at dumb cars all right if you like smart cars and smart people come That's to the track where you go come but no track. you can go to Quail how many Mopars have you ever seen at Quail Oh, I don't think they've done a Mopar thing at the Quail. I don't know. Well, why not just come in on the merits of being a good car? Yeah, I don't know what the theme is of the Quail this year. There's plenty of cars. There's like a mix of themes. There's plenty of cars with no themes, but they show up every year. Yeah. There's a bunch of Singer Porsches and stuff. All right. I'm just saying they're junk. Just stop it. Stop everybody with your Mopars. (laughs) That's all. But I never really drilled down on it. You don't see one the entire weekend. And it's nice. We need to invite Chris Jacobs onto the show. <laughs> I like him. I like Chris a lot, but he is such a Mopar guy. <laughs> he's such a sweet guy. And he's like, I like, should I bring him. my Mopar? When he came on the show, he's like, should I bring it? I was like, don't you have a Porsche? He's like, yeah. Bring that. Very rarely drive it. He's like, all right, I'll all bring right, that. Look, I love being, I'm sorry for being a douche, <laughs> but I'm tired of Mopar. It's going to force down my throat. I'll tell you what I do like, Garage Boss, man. Oh, yeah, yeah Garage Boss. Uh, they got the new Reach Your Height adjustable drain pan, man. Gets right under the drain plug, prevents misses and splashes. Works with low-profile cars or cars up on ramps or jack stands or trucks, whatever. Ground, uh, lifted off the ground, does not matter. Drains into a sealed container. All you clean up is the catch funnel. The uh, pieces snap right back into the uh, drain container. Simple, easy, no muss, no fuss. Plus, a new line of crystal clear funnels, so you see what you pour. You can prevent the overspilling. Oh, yeah, that's right. Pour it in the funnel too fast, and it bleeds over the top. Yeah. Yeah. Crystal clear. And the the funnel is uh, very easy to clean. I think they have liners, too, if you'd uh, like to use one of those. Exclusively at AutoZone or AutoZone.com. You can check out the video. they got a good video there. Go to AutoZone.com. Go GarageBoss.com. These guys are great. We use them for everything around here. Go GarageBoss.com. All right, let's take a phone call, and then we'll uh, bring our guests in right. in a couple of minutes. Oops. What happened to Patrick? How does he cut down the noise in a Subaru? Do tires make a difference? Yes. yes. They make yes, a they huge do. difference. Uh, speaking of dumb guys. The guys that got to run around in those fun and mudders just all over the place, just tearing up the highway, just driving yeah. the stupid big knobbies and their stupid big Ford F-350s with their stupid lift kits on them. Those so you assholes, don't like them? <laughs> what's in it for them? Like, no gas mileage, just that... You it's know, loud. Like, it's loud. Tires that make it loud. Right. Yeah. Again, idiots who want to be seen. Idiots? Okay. That yeah. want to be seen. Yeah. Oh, I see you. But uh, it ain't a good thing. So, tires, definitely. Tires I mean, do make a difference. And now we have, 
you know, the technology in tires is always weird because it seems like it never happens. But now there's the fuel efficient tires and the high mileage tires and the low noise tire. Like now when you go to like tire rack. They do have low noise have, tires. Like, like the tire rack has like performance rating and dry and then water and then there's like sound. Oh, really? Yeah. And I you never, can see, never looked at And you can see if, like, if it's a loud tire or not. Like that's an issue. That's, a, that's one of the buying conditions other than just like, hey, man, I just need tires for my car and I just mm-hmm. go to the Pep Boys or whatever or the – or the discount tire and get it done. But like when you do your shopping for tires, if you're, you know, on your discount tire or tire rack or something, sound is one of like the five major criteria, you know, dry and wet. And I'll bet you the quietest tire out there is either on a Prius or the BMW X3. Is it X3? 3X? What is the There's little electric X3. one? Yeah, the X3. Oh, That's no, no, no. The I3. Is oh, the, the I3. One. Sorry. Yeah. The I3. The I3. I3. Yeah. I feel like that's probably I the... Feel, I, I would say you're right. Like like a, like a Nissan Leaf probably has to have a very quiet tire because all you would hear is tire. Well, also... <laughs> a little bit of wind noise. But... Rolling resistance and lack thereof has to equal quiet, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there has to be a pretty straight line between the rolling resistance yeah. of a of a tire and the noise it's putting off, right? So the louder the tire, the better it handles. I think so. <laughs> Except for the monster truck things you were talking about, like yeah, yeah, the big but, knobby tires. But I think I I think there's some truth there. Yeah. All right. Let's see. So we got the guys from Jag coming in, the special vehicle operations at Jag. Uh, yeah. Max Pat will go get those guys. Okay. Matt will tell you about yeah. history. Yeah, the cars that made America. History kicks off Car Week with the premiere of the Cars That Made America. Little side note: I'm in that show. Oh, wow! Well, it's a three night, six hour special presented by executive producer Dale Earnhardt Jr. And they're going to do reenactments and never be seeing archival footage. Of seven icons, Henry Ford, Walter Chrysler, the Dodge Brothers, William Durant, Lee Iacocca, and John DeLorean. It wasn't like last year or something they did that Harley and the Davidsons movie. Mm-hmm. So this one is kind of like that. They're sort of the reenactment stuff. It's cool. It's going to be good. And uh, Car Week is a week-long celebration of American car culture, including car-themed episodes of, of favorite history shows like Counting Cars, American Pickers, and Pawn Stars. It starts Sunday, August 13th, 8 o'clock, 7 central, with Cars That Made America. Cars That Made America, I think, is a two- or three-night special, and I think it's three nights, and I think I'm in the third episode. We will set our DVRs. Dave Foster, Dan Connell, both in here from uh, Jaguar Special Vehicle Operations. Good to see you guys. Hey, thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Slide on up into that mic as close as you can, please. I know you guys were uh, here to talk. Well, we'll talk about everything Jaguar, but we have the X. ESV Project 8. Do yes. you guys have that car today? Yes, it's yes. Was it with us today? Uh, it's a 200-mile-an-hour car. It's got the 5-liter supercharged V8, producing 592 horsepower and uh, 516 foot-pounds of torque. There's 300 are going to be available. Um, are, they, are many spoken for already, or how does the sales go? Yeah, so we started the, the sales process just a couple of months back. Um, we announced the car took it to Goodwood Festival Speed uh, at the end of June. And, um, you know, this is a left-hand drive vehicle only, so we expect the U.S. to be very big for it. Uh, but actually in the U.K., we're really pleased with the response as well. So now we're taking letters of intent and uh, looking forward to getting the car down to Pebble and all of the parties at Monterey uh, to, uh, to see more people that are interested in it. Uh, it's great to see Jag back on the scene and, and in such full force because i was talking well you guys probably know football the other kind of football i know the american kind of football but i said uh, this to rich eisen of the nfl network so you don't know any of these names i heard that name you know rich eisen i said he said the raiders he said the he said the raiders the oakland raiders were going to be good this year and i said i don't like the raiders but good because as a football fan i like it when the perennials are there when the the jag? But I don't I, I I don't like to see the jags go away. Like I don't I didn't like it in the eighties when I saw the blue hairs driving around the champagne colored four door with the super soft suspension. Like yeah. that's not jag to me. I like mm. to live in a world where jag is there. They're performing. They're going up the hill at Goodwood. Ah, so much racing history, right. performance that's, history. That's, I'm and, glad jag and got one of the back best looking it. engines. One of yes. the best looking engines that that overhead. 
So J- I, when did head cam. Jags commitment? Oh yeah, I mean the inline, the four point two or the three point yeah. eight with, with the gold in there. Yeah, it's, it's just it, the best looking. It's actually. the best looking. <laughs> and for those, I'll kiss a little more Jag butt. But yeah. I will say this. <laughs> so I grew up out here in North Hollywood. And, uh, you know, in the 80s and everything. And uh, Jag, to me, was just some a car that rich widows got. Like, that's what Jag was. They didn't really have a lot of offerings in the 80s and out here. And so I had in my head that this kind of a soft car, and it breaks down. And it's for the, for the widows in Beverly Hills. And then I went to Goodwood, the Revival. And I saw those guys just whooping up on the Ferraris on the track and kicking the Cobra's yeah. asses and stuff like that. And I was like, wait a minute. I knew the Cobra's kicked ass. I knew the Ferraris kicked ass. I thought the Jag was for the Widows and the Four Doors. Yeah. And they got on that track and they would just kick ass. And then that's when you realize the history yeah. of Jag and mm-hmm. racing. You have to go to that Goodwood revival to really see those cars in like full effect. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. And you know, it's 60 years since the D-types at Le Mans. Uh, five cars in the top ten. You know that's incredible for Jaguar. That's one of the, the most amazing records ever. But I think right now it's interesting with Project Eight. This is probably the most extreme performance Jaguar we've ever done. So being part of SVO, that's kind of led us to the point where people like Dave get to uh, effectively take a brief to do something <coughs> super exciting and then yeah. you know really uh, go for it. Let, let's talk about SVO and this this division that you guys are doing now. How? What is it? Why create this division? Why now? Like, how did this come to be? You know, because we've that you were leaning into the performance cars, doing the R model cars mm-hmm. and things like that. But yeah, we've had BMW's M division, AMD, yeah. AMG division. So now, how did SVO start? Mm-hmm. Well, I think SVO is just three years old. So we launched in 2014 uh, with Project 7. We also have a classic division alongside us now. So you remember things like the lightweight E-Type that's come out of uh, this new special operations setup. And um, you know, the core remit is to look at you know, what are the inherent strengths of the core products. So Jaguar is a sports car brand. Land Rover, fantastic capability, all-terrain cars and luxury. And that's why we've got things like the Range Rover Sport SVR, yeah. the Range Rover SV Autobiography. But the Project Series cars, we started with Project 7, that is something very different. That's where we know there's a small group of, uh, of clients who want something really acutely focused. And that's when we say to, to Dave, uh, go enjoy yourself. Yeah. So am I the only one confused that it's called SVO and all the cars are SVR? <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's, mm, yeah, it's, it's an interesting challenge. So SVO is, is, the, is the business. Yeah. That's the brand building it. Mm-hmm. And then we've got, I mean, it's unusual. You, like for you, you say the confusing thing. I guess the fun part is that unlike BMW with just M or Mercedes with AMG, we've got Range Rover Luxury. We've got sporting uh, pedigree with Jaguar. You can th- combine all these things and do something that, you know, there's always a, a, a group of customers that want. What, what's the benchmark for, for SVO? Mm-hmm. Like, what does it have to do above and beyond the normal car? So when, when somebody at JAG or mm-hmm. you sit down and, and Ian Callum and his team are going, hey, man, XE, we're going to do the four-door car, small four-door car. It's going to have the four and the six and whatever. Yeah. To become an SVO it's, it's trying, to, tr- trying to find that ultimate extreme, really. Yeah. So, so how, can, how far can we push the product? Uh, with Project Tape, it was, a, it was kind of a, a, quite a loose brief. Go and make the most extreme car you can. So taking the XE, the lightest car we've got, taking the most powerful engine, let's try and create something unique. And really, with Project Tape, it's been, been an enthusiast car internally, so, so that all the guys are enthusiastic about making such a product, um, just so that we can sell it to the enthusiasts. Does Jag have any plans? Well, so one thing that's really nice is I think there's another Jag with Lama history, like an XKE that's coming up at the auctions this year, I believe, you know, these cars have been going for multi, multi, well over $10 million. I think there's another one coming we up. We set a record at like RM, was it last year, two years ago, the D-type? D-type? It was like $14 million. Yeah, that's it was sorry, like the, D-type. Right. It was like the record for a British car and a record for a mm-hmm. Jag. Yeah. Too bad y'all didn't get any of that. <laughs> <laughs> but, and there's another one, I believe, yeah. that's coming up this, this weekend. And, and, of course, you guys then offered some sort of retro-bodied cars where you found some of the original chassis from before the fire or whatever it is. I'm screwing up everything, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Does, yeah. And those things sold out immediately, yeah. and you yeah. made like seven or nine of them or 11 or nine. Some, yeah. Nine. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. They're fantastic. They're right. fantastic. But I'm, yeah. I'm thinking to myself, hey, if I'm Jag, that would be on my menu somewhere. It wouldn't be a big part of wouldn't be on the drive through but you could, it'd be one of those chef yeah. selection things that every year, like a handful of whatever that you offer, and I've heard of heritage 
something. Is there any thoughts of that, or do you guys aware of any any of those projects? Yeah, well, I think for for SVO, so the modern stuff, we will absolutely there'll be a new SVO product every year. You know, Jaguar Land Rover, something really special. The classic guys, I mean, they're seeking to innovate as well. We just opened Classic Works, which is effectively the global HQ. So in there, you've got a, a giant sales showroom. You've got a storage facility, 550-plus cars. And you do the ground-up manufacturing of things like the XKSS that you talked about. But then service and maintenance, you know, we just partnered with Pirelli to create a new tire for XJ220. It's kind of everything is an opportunity and maybe... You know, before a couple of years ago when that classic division was set up, we didn't really have a harness on what the potential of heritage was. But, I mean, you, you see it in abundance at, at Pebble, and um, just just talking to those guys will be interesting to us Is, next is the classic division going to just do, like, the recreations or the XKS, like, continuation projects, or will they do restoration for, for private individuals? Everything. Everything. And we're talking about things like getting together with Pirelli for the 120 tires. It, Repopping these things. So the thing is, it's like a lot of these things don't exist anymore. Yeah. So you see guys driving around in Lamborghini SVs with BF Goodrich tires on there at uh, 69 bucks a corner. Because it's the only thing that would like fit. Well, because yeah. they, they need a 15, 215, 60 series. And like, yeah. well, BF Goodrich yeah. makes the only one that makes it. Yeah. So somebody's gotten wise and went, look, these cars are getting really expensive. Mm-hmm. No one wants to drive around with stupid. $60 tires that they got at the Costco on yeah. these things. Yeah. Let's repop these things. If you can get enough guys who have these cars or need these sizes together, then it makes sense for Pirelli. But it's nice to see everybody, except for Nissan, which I have, everybody getting back into their heritage. Once again, except for Nissan. Well, but, because you have all the cars. Right, but Mazda's getting out there. BMW's getting out there. Ferrari's done their program. Yeah. Everybody's dipping back and going, wait a minute. Yeah. We had some really cool cars. We had some great heritage, and we did a lot of winning. Let's service those customers. Everybody so, celebrates it except Nissan. Except for Nissan. <laughs> everybody. Yeah, Even on, Toyota's Nissan. getting back Seriously, into it. Seriously, come on, Nissan. Everybody but off. Nissan. Pick up the ball here. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um, it's like I'm cursed with these guys. But it's weird because Nissan has such a great history in racing, but they're not that interested. They're like, well, we're looking at the Leaf 3. <laughs> That's what we're <laughs> That's, focusing on. Uh, they love to sell new cars. I mean, everybody does, but come on. Yeah. The classic stuff is... Well, I would it's argue yeah. that it's There's all... The heritage. It's, it's, all, all. it's all part of the you know win on Sunday, sell on Monday thing, which is it's not... Win on Sunday, sell on Monday, but it is a a brand, and it's a brand that needs to be sort of watered and nurtured and kept alive. Not just what comes out next year. It's yeah. what about all the winning? What about all the heritage? Yeah. What what about that? And there's, you know, if you take a company like Ferrari, there's probably more value in your your past brand than tomorrow. Yeah. Not not that there's no value in tomorrow, yeah. but you have so much. Yeah. You're so it's so much history. So why not if you yeah. have Jags history, why not really why not focus on that? Like why not make that yeah, a yeah. part of, of your overall strategy? Yeah. It, it's uh yeah. it's an amazing history. And uh so you guys are you guys are going out to Pebble Beach. Uh-huh. Right. Should be there, yeah. You bring in the car. Do you get out to the track? Yeah, absolutely. So we're actually gonna be there uh, on the Thursday evening at the kind of opening party. Mm-hmm. So we'll present the car officially. Uh, to obviously a broad audience for the first time then. Then we'll be at the track uh, all day with uh, with both versions. So we've got the, the four-seat, the U.S. spec uh, car there as well, but also there's a non-U.S. spec vehicle with a, a track pack, so a, a, a half cage effectively in the back and some, some seats that unfortunately the U.S. Uh, regulators don't particularly like. Sure. Um, but, uh, yeah, we'll have a strong presence there. We're just shooting the car now. Obviously, we've arrived and give you guys a look at it today. Um, it's the, exciting. The race seats... Are not about safety. It's about we're also fat. That's, it. Here. that's, that's it's why it's shaming to put an American. Just kind of, yeah. uh, uh, you know what? These seats are illegal. That's right. We need a bed sheet. You're literally fat shaming every American. By yeah, we don't need that kind of fat shaming. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, one day the uh, UK will be successful enough to be fat. <laughs> well, we're not dialing, dialing back the spec of the car in other ways. Are we? The power, everything else is yeah. as you want it. Uh, what kind of Geez, do you have any thoughts about lap times over there, Laguna Seca, or are you going to go at it, or is it going to be, hey, put 
Jay Leno's wife in the car and take a take a nice cruise, <laughs> or are we going to like try to try to put some times on the clock? But I mean, this car's an Audi development vehicle. But I mean, you should tell the guys what we're planning with that car in terms of track times. Yeah, definitely. So, um, so I mean, Nurburgring's our ultimate goal. Uh, mm-hmm. One of the biggest challenges to try and do that not sixty three point three, but also that two hundred mile an hour. So, trying to find that balance between the V Max. And the, and the 0 to 60s, and then trying to put a lap time in, it's been been a real challenge for us. So the car's got quite a lot of changes that you can make to the car. So on a track, we can change the aerodynamics. We've got adjustable splitters, adjustable yeah. rear spoiler, um, and we've got adjustable suspension, so the, the customer can uh, change the ride height of the car when they get to the track. Do uh, so okay. does, and I'll, I'll tease it, but I've seen it in the well, well. You tell me what the official color is. It's got a. It's got a really cool looking kind of um valencia orange and velocity blue ah all right well uh we'll see so those are the two those are the only two 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 launch cars yeah two that's available all right we'll take a look at that we're going to go walk around the car at some point right yeah show that to people too i'll tell you guys uh you can check out on it i heard me talk about on before amazing supplements like alpha brain Buffalo Meat Warrior bar, Bars, MCT Oil. Put a little shot of that in my coffee this morning. Very good for what ails you. On its CEO, Aubrey Marcus, did a Take a Knee, my motivational podcast. We talked about going from college athlete into a, turning into a multi-million dollar brand and uh, when to abandon your dreams. Listen to a little snippet of it. What I'm trying to say to people, because we, we always do this, hey, you got to follow your, those dreams and you got to hang on to them. You got to shoot for the stars. You got to hang on to those dreams. Like I'm saying, no, you don't abandon those things. Just like you did in basketball, just like I did, believe it or not, in football, just like so many other, just like my son will do one day, he will abandon his dreams. So they filmed the whole thing. The On It guys filmed the whole thing, and you can watch the entire podcast. And behind the scenes, a little mini doc free at onit.com slash Adam. And while you're there, save 10% on your entire order. Really good supplements. And uh, they got a good jump rope, too. So go to onnit, O-N-N-I-T dot com slash Adam. All right. Uh, so the car is out. We're going to take a little look around that. You guys are basically here on your way to Pebble Beach, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, the car... Is going to get trailered up, I'm, I'm guessing, and taken directly to the track at this point? Or yeah, what's pretty much, yeah. The, the next stop. Are you guys going to do your wacky Jaguar stuff, like fastest truck on two wheels <laughs> and <laughs> fastest car on a high wire? Or, or like, there's, 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 like, there's been some weird stuff. Yeah, there's stuff. been some good ones. There's yeah, been some right? good ones. Like, there's some, yeah. some crazy stuff. But now, you were talking about the history, and then we were talking about, like, what's tomorrow for Jag. And I'm seeing a lot of... Uh, Jaguar's participation in Formula E, mm-hmm. very fast, quiet cars, <laughs> yeah. racing, mm-hmm. and and I'd like to believe that a lot of that technology of what you're learning there is going to get poured into this iPace, this electric mm-hmm. SUV that we love. We went and we saw this thing like a year ago. We saw the unveiling at the whole. We did the crazy VR thing, oh, yeah. and like <clears throat> like Ian Callum popped up in our heads, and it was very <laughs> white and pasty. And we're like, look, there he is. And <laughs> but it was a great way to to launch that vehicle, mm-hmm. and that's probably what like a year out. Yeah, so yeah. I think we'll yeah. introduce that next year, mm-hmm. um, officially. But uh, I mean, Formula E isn't something that Special uh, Operations does directly, but. Definitely, the electrification program is really important. You know, we've got something that is interesting to a different audience. Clearly, it's a big V8, um, a very different type of product. But iPace is um, is massively important to the business. And yeah, what you know, what, what is learned um, on track? Definitely, we see that it, being important in the road cars in future. As the the ultimate performance division, you have to be starting to look at the electric side as well, right? Like you've got almost six hundred mm-hmm. horsepower in in this Project Eight. Yes. But at one point, do you go down that path? And I, you experimented. I forgot the name of the concept car from a, you know half a dozen years ago or so. But it was the kind mini of mini turbine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Six seventy five. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Did that have like electric motors in the front and the gas yes, engine it, in the yeah, back? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so when we were we really given an opportunity to explore new new opportunities, so yeah, uh, uh, we're not necessarily always looking at just V eights whilst they're fantastic. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, we get given that that opportunity to go investigate new technologies and how that then plans out in the future is is something that we're always looking to to evolve. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Well, the Formula E thing is smart because you think, well, here's all these cars and they participate in Le Mans, and, but they get a lot of information out of the diesel and a lot of information about the hybrid stuff, and uh, they, you really get to test like that. But if you're going E and you want E performance, and so 
the beginning part of E is everyone talking about range and how fast it charges, but we will quickly get into performance when it comes to yeah. electric because that's just the way human beings, pardon the pun, I mean, are wired. Acura, McLaren, Ferrari, like they've they've kind of got into electric as a performance yeah. addition before fuel economy mm-hmm. was their thing, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Well, it's a quicker way to get up to sixty miles an hour. So if yeah. you're if you're looking for performance, you'd be sort of a fool to look past that. But uh, yeah, this uh, is it the F Pace E or the, well, the, e? the I Pace is I-Pace, the electric sorry. SUV. Yeah. And now, as we're starting to get a little bit closer, there's more testing. We're starting mm-hmm. to e- even see some the specs on it, and it's something like three hundred mile range and yeah. zero to sixty in like four seconds. Yep. Like that's. That's badass. Yeah. It's, also, it's, it's badass. Good. It's not. Yeah, yeah. It's not an F type. Yeah. It's yeah. not a little two seater. You know. It's like <laughs> it's a SUV and it's got room and it's, yeah. That's no, impressive. Impressive yeah, so far from what you see. It seems pretty cool. So where do you guys go when all the dog and pony show is over? Do you? Where is your headquarters? Is S is SV is uh, SVO separate from the main Jag, or are you in with the, the rest of the, the pedestrians? Because you sound like you're from Van Nuys. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're kind of separate together, really. So we, we are uh, separate away from the business. So we've got okay. the, the SVO Technical Center. Uh, so it's a, a unique facility that we've got. Um, the engineers will always relate back to the main business. So where, where the, the, the main engineering is done, we spend a lot of time with those guys, understand what those cars are all about. So we can then understand how we can improve those cars for the future. Yeah. But we, we do, as, as Dave says, we have our own facility. So just a year ago, we opened that technical centre in the UK. It's in Warwickshire. But um, you have a sort of Formula One-style laboratory workshop in there, which is where a lot of the uh, the top-end products are, are hand-finished. Uh, Project 8, coincidentally, will be the first car that is completely assembled by hand in there. Um, obviously, the amount of engineering change that the guys have done requires a very specific process. But just having the flexibility to do something like that does allow you to take products to a different level. Mm. So for us, it's kind of yeah, it's the ultimate it's bat cave sort of stuff, yeah. isn't it? How Are many it? how many <clears throat> SVO cars have been released? You said it's only three years. So we have the yeah. the, the Range Rover Sport SVR. Yes. Yeah, Range Rover SV Autobiography. It's a long wheelbase luxury car. Okay. Um, then we have the SV Autobiography Dynamic. So if you want a kind of gentleman's express, but you still need the full size rangey, that's that's yours. Um, for Jaguar uh, F Type SVR, obviously that's a, a kind of a very much a, a usable everyday supercar, yeah, that you know, four-wheel drive. Uh, but uh, then there's the two Project Series cars. So we did 250 of the Project 7s uh, based on the F-Type. Fantastic design concept, really. And then Project 8 is the latest and greatest. But we should see an XE SVR at some point. Like when you're done with Project <clears throat> 8, we need an SVR. Yeah, well, th- to be honest, um, we only have plans to put the V8 uh, that's in that Project 8 in that car. So well, Project 8 is that product. All right. Everybody that wanted one, you're screwed. <laughs> do you? Do you <laughs> I'm going to tease a, a question, which is, does the main man come to you and go, here's what I'd like you guys to work on, or do you go pitch to them, meaning, hey, we need some money because I have a great idea. So don't answer. I'm curious <laughs> how it works. And uh, before that, I'll tell you about ZipRecruiter, man. It's tough to find a good talent, man, especially for your business. ZipRecruiter, you can post your job to 100 sites with just one click. And their powerful technology is efficient, and it matches the right people to the right job like yours. Unlike other sites, ZipRecruiter doesn't depend on candidates finding you. It finds them. Over 80% of jobs posted Get a qualified candidate in just 24 hours. So no uh, juggling emails or calls. Screen, rate, and manage candidates in one place with their super easy-to-use dashboard. And right now, my listeners can post jobs on ZipRecruiter free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com. That's, uh, sorry, ZipRecruiter.com slash car. Let them know you heard it here. ZipRecruiter.com slash car. Do it for free. Post those jobs for free. Once again, ZipRecruiter.com slash car. Try it for free. All right. So you have an idea. You pitch them. They have an idea. They pitch you. How's it work? Uh, 50-50, really. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm 
probably one of the first people in the line within the business to uh, try and define what the product should be. So sometimes it's, it's the team within SV, the engineering group, so I've got a series of ideas that we want to try and apply to a car. So we can, we can come up with a, a complete blank canvas around what we think the engineering proposal should be and sell it back to the business. Other times there will be a, a, an understanding of, of what we want to try and achieve in the marketplace and, and the seniors will ask us, well, how do you create that in terms of engineering? So it's, so it's trying to find that balance. Uh, with Project 8, it's been, a, been an opportunity for the engineers to express themselves uh, we've been working with the design team as well, so it's probably the first opportunity where we've not been given a design and have to make it work from an engineering perspective. It is, right, this car has to work. It has to cool itself. So, so design, please put these holes in the bonnets in the right place. Make sure that we've got the wheel arches in the right place. And even simple things like moving the headlights forward on this car to make the wheels and tyres that we need to fit. Right. That, that's what we've had to go through. Uh, what size wheels and tyres do we have? 20-inch. Uh, um, they're running a 265 on the front uh, and a 305 on the rear Michelin Cup 2s. 30 series? Wow. 30, 25? Yeah, 30. Yeah, so it's a, thir- yeah, it's a 265, 35 on the front. And a 30 in the rear. 30 in the rear, yeah. Um, so, Dan, you worked for McLaren before, right? What was your I did, job yeah. over there? Yeah, so I was there. In a oh, re- wait, is that doc out yet? The McLaren the, doc. The Bruce McLaren. I want to see that I mean, documentary. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. All right, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, but it's yeah no, that was a really interesting, um, interesting time. So it was 2008, 2009. I joined uh, McLaren effectively to, to begin the process of starting McLaren Automotive which is now the sports car company that obviously kicked off with building the, uh, the catchily named MP412C. I think they've got a... <laughs> I'd never get it right. I never got it right, ever. Um, Plus, the, that Maserati MC12, yeah, yeah. whatever, yeah. that you're getting... Just, yeah, everyone's getting too close to each other. and spread it out a little bit. Yeah, well, I think Ron Dennis decided that it should be inspired by the, uh, the race cars, which, you know, MP4 was always the designation right. for, uh, yeah. for all of his race cars. He but was wrong. Yeah, I, yeah, as I said, I think we reviewed that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, amazing time. You, know, you, you have so much motorsport history behind you but actually the challenge is now go and beat ferrari you know that and right. the, at the time they had just launched 458 i'll give you the best car ever right so i mean the, the stakes were high and the targets were massive and um i'm really pleased for the guys that are there now because i think 720s has taken on to another level and um it's good in britain where you know engineers are, you know, it's, it's not a dying breed but it's certainly mm. we're all after the best in the business but to see mclaren doing great things jlr with the evolution of svo it's a you know it's a good time I agree. I, I like it when all the brands, especially the ones with the heritage, are up and up and running. As, as discussed at the beginning yeah. of the show, it just I like as a car guy, I like to live in a world where Jag and McLaren are out and Ferrari are out there doing their thing, like racing, being competitive, coming out with new product and yeah. honoring the old stuff. All right, we're going to go out and take a look. In one second, first I'll tell you quickly about uh, Geico, man. Look, you're going to drive the McLaren, you're going to drive the Jag, you want to drive that uh, 458, you need insurance. How about you go to geico.com, you spend 15 minutes, see just how much auto insurance you could be saving in just 15 minutes. 15 minutes could be saving up to 15% on your car insurance. Why wouldn't you do that? Take that uh, extra money, put it in your pocket, or um, do... uh, Go, go to our website and buy a mug with it. How about that? <laughs> Get a little, a little something back, huh? So what do you do? Go to geico.com. 15 minutes. You could be saving 15% or more on your auto insurance. All right. Uh, you can go to our website, uh, carcastshow.com. And uh, I'm doing live shows around the country doing uh, stand-ups. You can go to adamcurl.com and find out anything we got over there. Uh, and... Where should people go? Well, we already kind of said them, but go to jaguarusa.com to find out uh, anything Jag. And until next time, this is Adam Corolla for Dave Foster, Dan Connell, and Matt, the moderator, DeAndrea, saying keep the air in the spare and the bag in the wheel. For the latest updates and call-in times, follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at CarCast Show. If you'd like to write in, fill out the form on CarCastShow.com. And don't forget to give us a nice rating on iTunes. CarCast is a Corolla Digital production and is produced by Chris Loxamana. For more information, visit CarCastShow.com. presents the Corolla Drinks Comedy and Music Tour, August 22nd in Santa Barbara, California, with Loxie. Baby, let's roll. Kills 
Tickets now at CorollaDrinks.com. Now the pretty girls start to look the same. And comedy with your host, Matt Edgar. Hi, you working high? The show on? Good to know, dude. Now I know where to get my weed and gas. <laughs> I'll put 20 on 10 and uh, 20 on a 10. <laughs> and special guest, Taylor Morgan. And I remember when I got my first check for acting. The check said right on it, actor's fee. And I showed a friend of mine, I was like, you know, I really want to frame it, because it's the first one, but I sort of need the 50 bucks. <laughs> and he said, no way, you frame it, I will give you the 50 bucks. Which I thought was so nice. So I showed another friend, I was like, you know, I really want to frame it. The Corolla Drinks Comedy and Music Tour at Soho Restaurant and Music Club. Follow on Twitter at Soho SB. Sponsored by Eastman Guitars. Visit EastmanGuitars.com. Loxie and the Smokin' Kills. Plus Matt Edgar and Taylor Morgan. Tuesday, August 22nd. Get your tickets now at CorollaDrinks.com. 